Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode, it's Thriller Thursday, where I bring you fictional tales of horror. In this episode, I'm sharing the first chapter of a book I'm narrating by J.C. Moore from his book Tainted – Dark Intrigues Book 2, which I have linked to in the episode description. The story is called Savage Pursuit, and without giving you any spoilers, I will say that despite my masculine voice, the tale is told from the perspective of a young teen girl by the name of Karen. Now bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. My mother's heels beat steady with each step as she moved through the room. Opening the closet, she pulled out a dazzling red dress. With her lips painted red like a snow-kissed rosebud, she transformed when she put on the dress. She did not go out often, but it was always a sight to see when she did. She smiled at me and said, "'Be good while I'm gone, okay?' "'I will, mother. And don't answer the door for anyone, do you understand?' "'Of course,' I nodded. When will you be back home? Soon enough, love. Mommy's got to bring her friends around like she always does, but I will bring you a bedtime snack, so make sure that you behave while I am gone. Before leaving, she kissed my forehead, and I clung to her dress, relishing her perfume. I hate it when you leave me, mother. Don't take too long, yeah? I won't, my darling. Don't worry. Mommy always comes back to you. With a last smile, she left and closed the door behind her. I fought back the tears. The individuals my friend's mother was talking about, the ones who showed up late at night with cigarettes and bottles laughing loudly and stumbling around with slurred speech, I already knew them. They all disgusted me, particularly how they eyed me like I was a plaything for their enjoyment. The warmth of her embrace still lingered on my skin. I watched her figure grow distant with each stride against the fading hues of pink and purple in the sky. Her footfalls echoed against the pavement until they eventually faded away, leaving only that pang of longing deep within me. Collapsing onto the sofa's velvet cushions, I surveyed the room. Glimpses of sunlight pierced through the curtains and illuminated the walls, each adorned with posters of gothic rock bands that seemed to tease me by holding secrets behind their sad faces. I was at my mother's house, yet I still felt like an outsider. From the windows I glimpsed the cityscape, sleeping beneath a sea of darkness with only the faintest sounds of movement breaking the stillness of the night. I stared hard into the shadows, using every ounce of my strength to hear any hint of sound coming from beyond my walls but all that greeted me was an oppressive stillness. Moving to the bedroom, time felt never-ending until laughter and voices filled the hallway stairs. I peeked out the bedroom door. The sound of keys rattling preceded the entrance of two hulking figures into the living room. I could feel the raw power emanating from their magnetizing eyes like they could snap a bear in half with one hand. My mother's eyes darted to me in a fleeting moment before she hurried off to the kitchen, motioning for her guests to relax. The beautiful yet strange visitors willingly came to our home, but my naivete prevented me from comprehending their purpose. It seemed to be some archaic ritual that only adults had access to, and my heart shuddered when I thought about what might happen after all the drinking was done. "'Come join us, my dear!' my mother's voice called from the kitchen. "'We have some delightful guests here who wish to meet you!' My heart pounded as I stepped into the living room. 
A twisted embrace unfolded on the love seat. One man sprawled across it, the other balanced on the arm. They seemed to be in a state of ecstatic trance, with closed eyes and blissful smiles fueled by alcohol-induced delirium. The pale moonlight seeped through the window panes, illuminating their faces with a calming glow. Trembling, I slowly inched my feet forward and stood, staring momentarily. Like a storm, I burst through the entrance instantly, my hunger unstoppable. The scene greeted me with boisterous laughter as they assumed I was a child pretending. The man on the love seat had a drink and a devilish smirk. My mother's eyes filled with joy as she gestured for me to take what I wanted. With lightning speed, I lunged forward and pounced on them. My onslaught of teeth and claws drowned out their screams. When I finished, only fragments of clothing remained. I stumbled back into the bedroom, my fingers still coated in their lifeblood. With her eyes closed and a half-empty bottle of whiskey in hand, my mother was already lying on the bed. Inhaling deeply, I savored my accomplishment before falling onto the mattress beside her. I drifted off and quickly fell asleep with my mother holding me. When morning arrived, I saw my mother dressed beautifully with an elegant dress and a hat. "'Have you had your fill, my child?' she asked. "'Yes, mother,' I replied. "'It was delightful.' We remained there, day after day, until death took her away, leaving me in this abyss of anguish, forever cursed with the pain of her absence. My cravings and dark desires knew no bounds. Twisted together, ecstasy and torment fueled my insatiable hunger despite their pleas for mercy. I took great pleasure in the brutal act as each piece of flesh fueled my thirst for violence. They became nothing more than objects of nourishment to sate my desires. The violence pleased me. I could feel their life force, the scarlet substance coursing through my veins. Whether it was the delicate flesh of an infant or the fragile bones of an elderly person, my hunger had no limits. Anxious excitement filled the air as I pushed through the packed crowd to the blue light room. His burning eyes were smoldering, each muscle taut with an insatiable hunger and a power that surged around him like a million volts of electricity. His captivating blaze enticed a primitive force within, my heart pounding harder with every step that brought us closer together. He strode forward, desire radiating from his pores. His coal-black eyes sparked with an intensity that nearly overwhelmed me. "'Greetings,' he uttered, his voice a warm rumble. "'I am Sesto, and you are?' I thrust out my hand. "'Karen!' A sudden wave of warmth surged through me as our hands touched. "'Karen!' he purred, savoring the sound of my name on his tongue. "'You have such a hunger in your eyes.' What I'm hungry for is something only you can provide," I said. A grin formed on his lips, curling slowly as he gestured behind him. Is that so? Then come with me. Hand in hand, we weaved through the smoky dance floor filled with thudding music and frenzied voices calling for more drinks. He brought me up to a bar lined with writhing, sweat-soaked bodies straining for their libations. With one last squeeze of my hand, he released me. "'Let's drown in whiskey,' he said. "'Yes, indeed,' I answered, revealing more cleavage. His body pressed against mine, a familiar sensation ignited within me. "'What does a beautiful creature like you do here tonight?' he asked, his voice a whisper. "'Same thing that brought you here,' I replied. "'I don't want to be alone.' My index finger lightly grazed the inside of his thigh. I suggest we make our way to my place. It's just around the corner, he said. I drew nearer to him. We'd get there faster if we went to mine. He smiled with a rosy blush, evidence of his drinking while I abstained. Come to my place, he said. I promise you, it's the most secretive abode in this city. You won't want to leave. His gaze betrayed his longing for me. The seductive amber street lamps beckoned us from the shadows, sensed like a siren song, and lured us to his city apartment. His hands were rough, 
as if desperate for my attention, as he pulled me into his firm embrace. My heart raced with apprehension as we entered, unable to turn back. We climbed the rickety stairs, each creaking step sending echoing tremors down my spine, and I watched him fumble with a set of keys. His eyes blazed with an unstoppable hunger that sent a jolt of electricity through every fiber of my being, making me long for something wild and uncontrollable. Desire swelled within me, growing stronger with each second. He opened the door and put his keys in a small wooden bowl in the entryway. As I entered, the tight space created a uniquely inviting ambiance that put me at ease. The yellowish light from a single bulb created shadows on the walls and furniture. He moved with lightning speed, pulling me into his embrace and pushing me down onto the sofa. His body bore down on me, forcing me into the cushions while his hands clasped my arms gently. Fear coursed through my veins as he touched me, a sensation I'd never experienced before. He stared into my eyes briefly before swiftly getting up from the couch. My face lit up with a smile. I love this place. It's a place to stay, I suppose, he remarked casually as he went to the kitchen. Feel free to make yourself at home while I whip us up a cocktail. Sure sounds nice, I replied, trying to keep my heart from pounding. Coming to a halt, his eyes bore into mine as if trying to read my thoughts. You okay? Of course, I smiled. Just excited, that's all. The corners of his mouth curved upwards slightly before he walked away, leaving me alone with my thoughts. I heard him humming a melody from the kitchen and clinking glasses. The living room felt modern and secure. An unusual, otherworldly glow emanated from the windows. A car horn occasionally broke through the silence, but it only added to the serenity in the air. Like a gentle wave, a soothing sensation washed over me. My stomach growled and churned. The familiar pangs of hunger that had plagued me since childhood were stronger than ever. The urge within me was getting stronger, but this time I resolved to give in, to fulfill my primal longings before indulging. Tonight was going to be different. Sesto walked into the living room, clutching two glasses. Floating inside each glass were vibrant slices of oranges. He placed a drink on the table beside me, staring into my eyes. I took a deep breath, smelling the sweet alcohol from the tumbler. He smiled. This cocktail will make tonight unforgettable. It's renowned for being the best drink you'll ever taste. I took an eager gulp and felt the heat of the liquor as it trailed down my throat. It was electrifying, a flavor that I'd never experienced before. A warmth and clarity swept through me, making everything else around me seem intangible. I peered around to catch sight of Sesto, his looming figure standing over me as if he were a colossus, blotting out the rest of reality. So, Karen, what brings you here? Escaping something or someone? I slowly rotated my gaze and allowed our eyes to meet. No, I answered. My presence here is driven by a hunger unrelated to running. There was a brief pause before I carried on. What about you, Sesto? Why are you here tonight? The air seemed charged with electricity as if each molecule were alive and searching for an answer. His arm shot like a viper, coiling around my face like ivy on a tree. Suddenly, the world spun as I felt the harsh sting of chloroform seeping through the cloth and into my nostrils. I gave in to his unsettling smile and the words, Sweet Dreams. When I opened my eyes, everything became a disorienting blur. I tried to move but felt utterly paralyzed. Sesto's face became clear above me in an instant, illuminated by an unsettling green light. Ah, we meet again, Sesto sneered from above me. His harsh words grated through the inky blackness of the alleyway, echoing off the grimy brick walls lined with overflowing garbage cans and rancid puddles. The immense green dumpster near us exuded a sour smell of rotting waste. I doubt you have any idea who I truly am, he continued. Despite the gauzy confusion that clouded my brain, I tried to unravel the events that had occurred. 
I could only roll my eyes, my limbs completely useless. Even the slightest shift of my neck was an excruciating impossibility. A sharp, sinister laugh cut through the air. <laughs> Don't bother struggling anymore, a voice purred maliciously from beyond my sight. The concoction I gave you is powerful enough to overwhelm even your wildest efforts. Who? who? I slurred as my tongue lolled against my lips. He briefly retreated, knelt and searched through a small black bag. As he re-emerged, he tightly gripped a tool that looked like a cross between a drill and a scalpel. Are you ready for this? He asked, still chuckling. I'm not even sure if this will work on whatever you are, but why don't we try it? He came to stand over me, wielding the tool like a madman. You're making a mistake! Let me go now! I snarled, my eyes twitching. So what is it that turns you on? Why do you kill? Is it some sick sexual pleasure? I shuddered at his taunting words as if each syllable were a punch to my bruised and battered body. Don't you see? We are very much alike, you and me. It's like an addiction taking control over one's life. After years of trailing your every move, you are in my grip, barely able to breathe. Quickly tell me, do you even know who I am? An electric sense of dread hung as I lay against the deserted alleyway's cold, wet brick ground. The darkness seemed to expand, mirroring our tension. Every cell in my body screamed for me to flee, yet I remained firmly planted like an ancient tree. My pounding heart echoed like a war drum through my chest and every inch of my skin was alive with fear as his eyes bored deeper into me. Your reign of terror ends now, he shouted. Do you understand the gravity of your despicable acts and the lives you've taken to satisfy your hunger? Who are you? I asked, desperately trying to move. Dean! His name was Dean! He was my one true love! He roared, his voice trembling. Where did you take him? What kind of monster are you that you can do something so heinous? Uh, finish me and release me! I cried out. His weapon descended upon my flesh like a lightning bolt of pain. The agony was so sharp that it felt as though my soul was being ripped away from me. But I would not scream, nor would I give this fiend the satisfaction of seeing me cower beneath his hand. Instead, I fixed him with a gaze of icy hatred, my eyes seething with anger for the man who dared to judge me. You're a hypocrite! I spat the words at him. You judge me for the lives I've taken, but you're just as much of a killer as I am. This is for Dean, he shouted, and this is for all the other innocent souls that you've stolen from us. A river of agony cascaded down my body as the jagged blade ripped through my skin. My skull resonated with agonizing screams, engulfing me like a fire. I saw my entire life in a flash, just like I did to countless others I devoured. The sound of him dropping fragments of my body into the metal dumpster echoed. I longed for my mother's warm embrace, but it felt impossibly out of reach, drowning me in sorrow. Then an all-consuming void devoured everything around me, leaving nothing. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe. All stories on Thriller Thursday episodes are works of fiction, and you can find links to the stories or the authors in the episode description as well as on the website at WeirdDarkness.com. Savage Pursuit is by J.C. Moore from his book Tainted Dark Intrigues Book 2, which I have linked to in the episode description. Weird Darkness is a registered trademark. Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Psalm 112, verse 4. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. And a final thought. Trials are those blessings in disguise that expose the inadequacy of our favorite worldly comforts. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness. Darkness.